Hey YouTube, how are we doing today? All right, um, today is the uh, fifth video on the Renai Tankless series, um, and I'm actually uh, going to jump quite uh, ahead. As you all know, um, you know we we had um, Irma come through Florida and head up north, and um, we have had a lot of problems with the tankless heaters. Not so much being damaged, more so um, for uh, surges and power. So today, what I'd like to do is go over uh, two things. One, if you're going to run the tankless heater off of a generator, and two, the problem that we've had with probably 20 to 25 tankless heaters um, when power is lost inside the house. Okay, as far as a tankless heater, if you want to, you can run it off a generator. Um, you could even run it pretty much um, off of a battery backup. But if you have a generator, what you want to do is you want to have the generator started and running for at least five minutes before you plug the tankless heater in. And also any other electronic because when you start up a generator and if the tankless heater is plugged in what's going to end up happening is you're going to get a surge from inside of the dynamo in there and it can fry the PC board which we've had because when we've gotten to jobs and we've asked these people after diagnosing what the problem is okay you have a generator what did you do oh I had a, I had a bunch of stuff the refrigerator the coffee maker some fans plugged in well when they went back outside and restarted the generator the surge went in and burned out the, um, the PC board. So you want to have that generator running for at least a few minutes, then plug in the tankless heater. Now, also what's going to happen is that your customers or you may end up um, you know, running your generator and doing that, but you're going to forget to unplug the tankless. Because you know you don't run the generator, you know, you might plug the refrigerator in and let it run for you know two hours make some coffee, um, do something with uh, you know, charging batteries, and you can plug the tankless in. But people forget to unplug it. And then you're going to start up the generator a few hours later, and the surge is going to get into the generator, get into the tankless heater. Now, that's more so for an interior tankless, because an interior tankless, as you, if you saw from my first video, comes with an 8-foot leader plug out of the bottom of it. An exterior tankless heater, you have to wire. Now I'm going to take you outside to my tankless heater. I'm going to show you what I did. Um, last year, when we had Matthew come by, uh, my tankless heater was hardwired in. And I had to dis disassemble all the electric and put a pigtail on it to plug in my uh, generator. Also, the only damage in my house was my tankless heater. Um, and I purchased another one. I'm going to be swapping it out. I'll show it to you as we walk by. But let me take this off the stand here. I'm going to bring it outside and show you what I did. Give me a second here. All right, let's do a quick walk. There's the, there's the new tankless heater. Right now I have it, uh, got some uh, chewing gum on it. Let me take it out here quick and show you. Okay, this is what I did. It used to be hardwired, and now what I did was I put a lead. I, I put um, a pigtail down into an in-use cover and plugged it in. So now, what I do is, um, if I needed to, unplug it, plug it into the generator, and now I can operate the entire tankless heater. All right, let's get this back inside, and we can go on. Now, as far as if you do have a storm, now this does not necessarily mean a hurricane. This doesn't, you know, you, uh, people, you, you get a snowstorm. If you lose power, I highly, highly recommend either unplugging your tankless. If there's a switch or a knife disconnect, take, the, take it out or shut the breaker off because just say it's going to be off for a few hours and then a pole came down and, or a transformer blew up. Well, after they fix it and they turn it back on, you can get a surge and again blow the PC board. Or if the minimum, you can blow the fuses inside of it on the older models. Okay, 
The second problem we had, what happens is on the newer tankless heaters, and I'm going to show you, there's a thing called a water servo valve. Now this is a Renai water servo valve. Basically what this does is it, oh, there's a propeller in there, and as the cold water enters, it ramps up at speed, which fi step fires the burner. Now, when everything is off, nothing happens, tankless is not firing, nobody's flowing water. But if you lose power, this servo valve stays in the closed, de-energized position. Now, when it's normally plugged in and there's power getting up into the PC board and through the circuitry, this stays open. But once it loses power, it de-energizes itself, shuts down. No water will get through it, meaning that when you go to your faucets, you will have no hot water come, no, excuse me, no water coming out of the hot side of the faucet. And that, we got numerous phone calls about that. And basically, what's happening is that when the power went out, it de-energized itself and um, shut down. And now they can only turn on the, on the cold side, get cold water. But other than that, they can't get anything out of the faucets. So what we did the first couple of days is we schlepped around our generator. And what you have to do is you have to energize the tankless heater, just for a few seconds. Now, that's also what you have to do when you service these. So when you go to service them, you're going to go in and you're going to turn a faucet on. Maybe there's one in the garage, maybe there's one in the laundry room or wherever. You're going to turn it on and let the tankless heater fire. Unplug it. Now it stays in the de-energized open position. And then you can run your vinegar through. And then once you plug it all back in, it'll just go back into its normal circuit. That's what you want to do to your customers or to your house. Now, I'm only recommending this to, with an interior tankless or if your exterior has a plug. Other than that, I wouldn't mess with it and wait for the power to come on. Just shut the breaker off and leave it alone. But there's two things that we figured out. One is we either took one of these inverters, not the schlep around that big generator, pull it off the truck, start it up, make a lot of noise. What we ended up doing was taking this inverter. Now, most of our tanklesses, as you know, are in garages. So we pull our truck in, nosed in, plug this into the cigarette lighter, and plug in our extension cord right here, run it into the tankless heater, plug it in, turn it on, we hear the servo valve turn on, get some flow, unplug it. Now the people can take a cold shower and they get water out of both sides. Then we went one better, we I ended up taking this booster, this jumper, and it has, you know, well this is where you charge it, and it has, you know, it tells me what f level I have, turn it on, and I plug this in to here, and then plug the tank assist, and I don't have to schlep a big cord in. But most of the time, it's only like a 25-foot cord. This, this thing works the best. It's made by Rigid. It's an RD97100. Now, I'll put all the, the link, I'll put all the model numbers in the links below. But this thing is probably 20 bucks, you know, where this thing's going to cost you over 100 something dollars. You know, it's great to have, you know, your truck dies, you can boost it right up. But this thing, you can give it to your service trucks, and, or, you know, if you pull your car in your garage, just plug it in, plug it in, plug your tankless in, let the servo valve turn on, you can actually hear it, or turn the faucet on. You get water out of the hot side, unplug it. It'll stay in that de-energized position. Okay? So, just remember, uh, let your customers know. And my daughter made, whew, God, probably a hundred and some odd better calls on Friday before the storm was going to hit to unplug or shut off the tankless heater. Just so that, and that's when the power is down. So once the power, you lose power, then tell your customer or you do it. You don't have to do it as soon as, you know, there's threatening of storm, you'll have no hot water. So you could do it once the, you, get, you lose power, and that's lose power for anything. You realize that it's one of those outages where it's only going to be an hour or two, it should be fine. But um, once you lose that power, unplug it. Once you get the power back on, plug it back in, and it'll save a lot of heartache. Okay? I hope this was informative, and um, if you like the video, please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all on the next video. You have a safe and productive week. Bye-bye.